Life changing hour. Happy Wednesday and thank you for joining us. We are here live on Guided Embrace Radio on W4CY.com, brought to you by Talk for Media Network. I am one of your hosts, Jackie Vessio, and this is the premiere of a show we're going to be doing as part of our Embrace Your Authenticity series, Life Changing Our Live. And it is my honor and a great privilege to be able to introduce as my co-host, David Octavio Gandel. How are you, Jackie? This is the premiere of a Life Changing Hour. We hope that uh, we're able to change something in your life, hopefully while we're on. Yes. And uh, of course, we will have this on iHeartRadio later. Uh, download it there, but of course, this is first of many, many shows that we want to do that hopefully become um, somewhere where you can find inspiration. Yes, absolutely, and much like Guided Embrace Coaching Community in general, where we try to raise awareness that wherever one may be on their life journey, there are tools available to all of us to enhance the joy and ease the discomfort. We're taking it um, just a little bit further with this live show. We welcome Collins. We love questions and comments. The number, if you'd like to call in live, is 561-623-9429. The beauty of being on the internet is that we are live all over. Yes. So wherever you might be, whatever time zone you're in, if you're catching us live at 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays, on W4CY.com. We'd love to hear from you. Well, also, I want to say a shout out to everybody down in Denmark, in Spain, in Greece, um, Switzerland. I have friends everywhere today that are listening. I think it's 6 p.m., uh, 7 p.m. over there uh, right now, but they are listening and they, uh, they're watching. They're going to be watching us, I guess, when we put the YouTube video up. Well, for new listeners, welcome. And for people who have listened before and are join- joining us again, welcome back. Amen. We are thrilled to be here. So. Um, it's been an interesting day so far, I would say, right? Absolutely. And um, there's a little bit of irony in uh, <laughs> what's been happening, and and considering this is life-changing hour, um, I think I'm going to share. Okay. So uh, you and I are doing our pre-show planning meeting yes. over at Starbucks. Um, you know, very zen, right? And in a very good place mentally, and we realize, okay, it's we got to go. Time to get going, get the show on the road, and we leave. But when we leave, I'm carrying multiple items um, and all of my different technological devices and get in the car and we meet each other here. And what happens when I get in? Uh, There's no phone. No phone. We don't know where my phone is. Well, again, I have my big bag, I have my little bag, you know, it could be in my car. So we start searching. Um, Dee was nice enough to head over to Starbucks and scour the area. No phone. And I'm... I'm you know, certainly not thrilled to report that at break from our first show, which was on W4WN.com, I went and checked my car again because we're all sitting here saying, of course it's in the car. It fell. It fell between the seats. Um, it was definitely a comic relief few minutes for anybody <laughs> watching me in the car because I had you know, this leg hanging out, this leg hanging out. Um, phone's not there. But as I was walking back in, because let's be honest, we have days that are not our best days. No. You know, nobody's Mary Sunshine all the time. Mm-hmm. But I was walking back in and I realized, wow, this isn't good. Mm-hmm. However, what an amazing reinforcement of what's really, really important to my heart and soul. And that's the relationships we build. Correct. Because what's the first thing that I said to you and Chad? right when we thought it could be missing or could be sitting in Starbucks. The one thing I care about is all those pictures and videos on the phone of my kids. It's not the emails, you know, it's not the to-do list. Mm -hmm. It's everything that has to do with what's near and dear to my soul. And if you notice when people are on their life journeys and going through any sort of change, which ultimately even a lot of the changes we go through that are difficult, can end up having a silver lining. It's the relationships that Absolutely. we fall back on, right? Absolutely. So no, am I in a great mood? <laughs> yes, you are. Am I, uh, am I yes. thrilled that yes. this is happening? Yes, uh, you are. You know, and, and we, we, we did a show. It was our second show, and uh, Jackie's uh, been 
very positive and and is it, and you know it goes right back to our, our train of thought of what we think about and what mm -hmm. we put into our minds and what we allow to be in the now um, yes. in our lives right now and um, you know, it's, just, it's like I said it's a challenge I believe she's gonna find her phone I know the phone will be right. there and uh, we could have wasted two hours and not done right. the shows, we right. or we could have choice? gone right into well, it. No, we have a choice. We still have a choice. That's what I you mean. could have left me all alone. I, I mean, I would have done the show by yeah. myself. <laughs> Absolutely. But I guess what I mean by that is sometimes you have to say it is what it is. So, yes, what our choice have been to, and I'm not even judging, I'm just putting it out there. Oh, we're not doing the show. Oh, my goodness. Chad, do a replay. We're going to go search for <laughs> the phone, right? Um, to get all upset, to not be sure. able to be in the moment, but this goes back to the life-changing hour because I have to be honest, 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, I don't know that I had experienced or allowed myself to experience enough life-changing moments to have been able to handle what just happened now Correct. the same way I am today. Amen. Well, I'm you know? glad I was here to, to witness it. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can actually attest to it. You can vouch for me I can vouch, and we, and we, did, uh, we did really well, our first uh, show, and then, of course, the premiere of, of Life Changing Hour. You know, what we want to do with this show is basically to bring to light, um, you know, that life change, anyth anything that you do in life can be a life-changing moment, but certainly to enforce um, spirituality, physical activity, uh, mental um, thoughts and things that you can, you know, things that we can give you tools and experiences that we can share with you through other people, other guests that we're going to bring in the, in the show, nutrition advice, you know, everything kind of, you know, comes together and that's what we're doing with this show. That's kind of the vision for the show so I want to make sure I clear that so everybody knows what Life Changing Hour is. Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, we're not going to just be talking about, um, you know, the world is just what it is. We're going to talk about different aspects of our lives that can change our lives through nutrition, through physical activity, through nutri um, uh, spirituality, and, and um, also, um, you know, through mental and, and things that you put into your mind and things that you listen to. And, and we're going to give you advice on, on certain things or maybe some books that we like and, and some material that we think that might, you know, help yes. you get through some things as well. Well, and, and, you know, I think that more and more people are coming to believe in, not necessarily always understand, but believe in the power and the, the, the importance of the body-mind-soul connection. Right. You know, and, and finding that balance, which, you know, by the way, I don't think it's a cookie-cutter approach. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think that, you know, if, if for me, um, you know, multiple times, you know, getting on my knees and thanking God throughout the day is what makes the difference, but the next person does that once a day. There's no judgment, you know, Correct. whatever works for each for person. You. Absolutely. And, and find your truth and figure out what resonates with you and, you know, be a force for good Absolutely. in the world. Absolutely. And uh, amen. Amen to that. You know, today we have an interesting show. We have a couple people are going to call in as well. Um, uh, we have a young lady, um, hopefully she'll get on the phone um, soon, uh, her name is Melissa Bales, if you're listening, Melissa, um, but for sure we want to get you um, talk about something. She, I did a fitness show this weekend in uh, okay. Boca Raton, Florida, and I invited her. She's uh, representing Lymphoma and Leukemia uh, Foundation, and she's doing a big gala on June 11th. Um, oh, wow. And I've been learning a lot about leukemia, you know, how many can I know a lot of our cancer, but not sure. everything. And I've been learning a lot and about this organization. They donate so much locally. They do. Um, Here locally in South, in South Florida. They have a huge chapter. I met with one of the, uh, the, the main people yesterday. And Melissa is like a, co a chair of a captain of a team uh, to raise funds for this gala. And um, I have my shirt line, my, my strength line of t shirts um, that I sell for charity and things like that. And we sold a lot of them at the show. And, uh, but I said, you know, Melissa, I have this life-changing hour, and I want to see if, if you can call in. I would love to have you on the show. So hopefully, Melissa, you can call in, and we can have you uh, live to talk a little bit about the, the organization as well. And, uh, but then I found out more. They do co-pays for families through the whole treatment. Um, they do wow. all these things for because not everybody has an insurance, no. you know, things like that. So, and the other thing is the leukemia and lymphoma is like 90% survival. Um, it's it like is. they have a specific drugs already done mm -hmm. for this, so it's almost a hundred percent curable. It's like this, the money that's going into the research is working. 
is what yes. I meant. Yes. So I'm learning more and more as I go. And of course, you know, people will say about my cancer. I said, you know, I, I, I had the rarest kind of cancer. I have a case study. Um, but it's interesting how, and I share this with people all the time, for me to do what I'm doing, you know, to be a life coach and do all these things, I went through so much to get to where I am today. And what I mean by that is like everything about my journey was drastic. Nothing That's was, true. nothing about it was like, right. oh, someone else can do that or someone, no, right. God worked in my life in such a way that from the, the, um, the, the type of cancer it was, then covering all my organs, then the type of chemo that I was, then losing so much weight in, in three weeks and then waking up and still coming back for the second round in five days at 126 um, pounds is when I did my second round. Mm. Um, but I was 124 when I left the hospital the first time to gain weight through chemotherapy, to right. go to the gym to work out, to, um, you know, to speak. I had, uh, you know, seminars. I told you, Jackie, I had the seminars called uh, Living with Cancer, and people would show up and fundraisers and things like that. Um, all those things took a lot of suffering, a lot of sacrifice, but it took faith. And I believe that that is why I was going through it. And so I had, beyond a shadow of a doubt, in your mind, Correct. You knew there was a purpose for that struggle. And Correct. Strength. By the time I got to the, the sec, my second battle with cancer, right. I knew that I just didn't know the drastic. I didn't know how bad it was going to be. Okay. I mean, I had no, you know, you right. Don't, you of course don't, not. Right. You can't ever prepare no. for things like that. So no. my my only thing that I prefer is I found hope in my dreams, and we always talk about that. Mm -hmm. Your dreams are supposed to be a reality. And the way my dreams were coming, it was like, okay, well, I had long hair, and then the dreams that I was having, I was hosting shows, I was speaking. I was modeling, but I had short hair. It's like I haven't had short hair since I was eighteen. So but that's the vision that you that's held. the that's the dream and the vision that I held. I literally wow. held on to that. I said, "Well, God would not give me those dreams if they were not meant to happen." Absolutely. So, what's next is you have to make the choice that you're going to go believe in those dreams, mm -hmm. but then you have to find hope. Before you can even get to faith, you have to find right. hope. We talked about that one yes. time, just you and me, is how do you have faith when there's no hope? And what I hope to do, this is mm -hmm. my hope with this show, is to give you hope. Is to make sure that you can find hope in what I've gone through, what other people have gone through that we touch and, we, and we have shared. And for every single story out there, there has to be someone that has gone through what you're going through. Yes. And you can tap onto that and find hope and then you can start building your faith through that step by step step by step so that's what life changing hour to me means it's like when i had the opportunity we spoke about it it's such a blessing and an honor and i'm humble that you that you you know gave me this opportunity this platform and uh, what i pray about it is that people do find hope through what we what we share with them and they will you know, we're, we're here for a reason. It's bigger than the both of us. <laughs> Huge, yeah. So on that note, let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Psst. Jack it! Sorry. High five. Guided Embrace Radio, we are here live on W4CY.com, brought to you by Talk for Media Network. I'm one of your hosts, Jackie Vessio, and I am thrilled to be here with... David Octavio Gandel, we are live at the premiere of our first life-changing hour um, event. I call it an event because this is going to be, you know, an event. Me and Jack have been talking about doing some projects together. Um, we did a seminar mm -hmm. uh, just a, what a month a month ago. Yeah, about a, a month, month ago. A month ago, more. and um, it was the the amazing part of it. Jackie was at the end is when we finished, and how many people were some in tears, I know. some were touched, some were like, you know, they just, and I went last, I was supposed to go first, and yes. I, I was late because I, I, I do live in Miami, and yeah, I had to drive, a little bit of a drive. drive up there. <laughs> but what a seminar, and then we, me and Jackie just talked about, we have to continue to do this, and yes. we will build, you know, God's going to build a platform mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for us to, um, to bring amazing speakers as well, um, and to help people. It, and it was it was amazing the energy in that room and it was you know it's interesting how it was an eclectic mix of speakers we we were so lucky to even have Dean yeah, Piper Dean, Dean Piper from Talk for Media um, was there and did an incredible job but in addition to being an eclectic mix of speakers it was a, an eclectic mix of attendees 
totally and different. Everybody got something from everybody. I loved it. And and Dean stole all my lines. <laughs> I, I, I was telling Dean, I was like, I Dean, know, right? <laughs> you know, he was done speaking, and he used all these amazing, um, you know, phrases that we use as as uh, sure. as uh, motivational speakers or inspirational speakers. And Dean's story is amazing, of course. Yes, I mean, um, yes. Uh, how this got created internet radio and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I didn't know any of that I just know him as a nice guy mm -hmm. um, and he showed, and I Great was literally I was literally on him just looking at him his expressions his, and I was like wait I, I had that I have to check it off my list That's I can't say so that again uh, and I said to him you stole all my lives but I have to come up with new ones now but um, but that just but shows but that shows that you know the, that the, the all of us had things in common you know, mm -hmm. to get to where we are, mm -hmm. to fight through challenges, to go through yes. life things and, and altering things that happen in life and people don't believe in us or people believe in us and we go through all that and at the end of the day it's like we all have similar, you know, things mm -hmm. that happen that we can tap onto. And and we have a caller now, live actually. I have a special caller. I, I really wanted to uh, have her on the air. She is. She's on the air. Melissa, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Hi. Okay. She's on the air live, so we're not on Facebook. She's not there, but she is live on. on <laughs> she's she's with live. Us, she's right. live on the air, so you're gonna have to get the podcast to hear it. Um, but basically, uh, Melissa Bales, uh, she's representing the Leukemia Lymphoma Foundation, correct? Yeah. Yes, and she um, is a captain. Uh, she has, an, uh, I guess, the Woman of the Year is what they uh, what they had uh, given you a title. Correct. And I thought that was interesting, Melissa, because this, you know, all these organizations have a captain, right? And but they made an award so they can make you feel, because you know all the hard work that you have to do, right? And they, they're giving you an award to say, hey, you're going to be the woman of the year at our gala if you raise the most money. You know, so we're working on tables. Uh, Melissa was very uh, gracious this weekend. She came to our show and she had a table there. We sold shirts. But the biggest thing about Melissa, this was uh, what I love about her. She's all about promoting and things like that. But when it comes to her cause, she literally took a tour of the whole, uh, you know, the theater. And she went through all, everybody knows who Melissa is now. All the oh, all the sponsors wow. know who she is. Everybody took a picture with her. She nice. she went from from table to table. She introduced herself, and they just loved her energy. And and that's, that's wonderful. That and that has to be gratifying for you to see a difference being made in the realm of this type of blood cancer. Yes, absolutely. I And maybe you want to give the listeners a little bit of your background. Yes, Melissa, tell us a little bit of how you got into this. I love that.
Well, well and, and also to make a difference. And uh, at the end of the day, we that's what you're doing, what you're doing. And that's why I have you. I, I feel you're very special, and I wanted you to, to join us on my first on my first show here at the, at the premiere of A Life-Changing Hour. Um, and the reason I did that, I told Jackie, I said, you know, we, we're talking about doing another seminar. Um, maybe we are able to do something and have um, the organization be um, the sponsor, you know, and, and have you guys there, and, and maybe we can do it before June 11th, before the gala as well, um, with Guided Embrace, with our with what we're doing here. The other part, Melissa, please real quick, tell the, uh, like, uh, go to the website real quick and the link. Um, we're going to have, because remember, this is going to go on iHeartRadio, uh, but also we'll have the link on the website, we'll have the link on, on Facebook, I'll make sure that I'll tag the link uh, to you directly. Um, from the show when I when I put the video out, but the most important thing I want to make sure that I do is um, Say it now because the people that hear you on the radio they can actually you know, uh, so say that give us a link real quick Okay, and you're gonna text me that, and we're gonna have that on the website later. It's a long one, but uh, we'll make it, we'll make it so simple. We'll put it right underneath, so then we could just click. Absolutely. <laughs> and then for people that are interested in more information, is there a website they can go to? They can certainly go to either the mwoy.org or llms.org. Wonderful. Correct. Well, and, uh, uh, and, Go ahead. Perfect. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. And make sure you get that to me, Melissa, so we can have you on the. And, um, I'll put all those links together there uh, to make it easier for people on Facebook, and Twitter, and Instagram as well. Um, thank you, Melissa, for sharing. Um, you know your story. You know, of course, we go way back and. Uh, um, I always say, you know, you have this big heart and you're just a very giving person. Um, so proud to know you and be in your life and uh, what you're doing is very special. And um, I look forward to seeing you win the award. I'm predicting it already. Um, I don't gamble because, you know, uh, you know when, it, when money is involved, I don't do that. <laughs> but there's no money involved here. So I'm going to bet that um, you will be the woman of the year at the LLS um, 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 Gala. Thank you. And on June 11th, and uh, we'll make sure to do our part and help you any way we can. And thank you for being on the air with us, Melissa, and uh, God bless you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, I think what she's doing really is incredible, and it certainly touches my heart. Uh, we lost my mother to liver disease and uh, leukemia about 12 years ago, and about a little more than two and a half years ago, um, two twin girls, identical twins, um, ultimately became my goddaughters. Um, they were diagnosed with leukemia, and um, we lost Ashley last year, um, about a year ago, and her twin, Samantha, um, is still alive. She's in remission. Um, so, uh, you know, this, this is an organization that really I am very thankful they exist. I'm thankful for the strides that they are making. And anyone who's giving of themselves in any way um, to help people with terminal illness, you know, they're angels on earth, right? Correct. Right. And, that, and that's the thing. They're, these are, you know, Melissa is somebody that's donating her time. She has mm -hmm. her jobs, jobs. Uh, right, right. And, and, and she does triathlons or marathons, things like that. And she does all, a lot of that stuff for charity as well. Um, so then That's she amazing. got she got nominated for this, and I said, "Well, if somebody nominates you, they believe in you." Absolutely. Um, so when they believe in you, you're supposed to do something about it. Yes. You know. Yes. Um, I told her pray about it, and she did. Um, you know, I just believe that you know when you when you do it's just like when we met. You know, we just mm -hmm. go. We're obedient about certain things in life, mm -hmm. and we just have to do it. You just know but, what you know. But then you see all these other great things happening. Um, through it, so yes. that's that's where I'm at, and I just hope that um, people get that message. And you can do anything, seriously. There's, you can right. always help somebody if you. Right. If, and I say to the people, if you if you feel like you're alone or you feel like you're um, you're going through something right now, 
find someone to help. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard sometimes mm -hmm. because you're kind of either you're lonely or depressed or something like that. Find someone to help. Do something. Get outside Just of yourself. Just get outside of yourself. And then you find out that you forgot about why you were depressed in the first place. You so find, true. You know, I always say, you know, when you need love, you give love. You know, that. when you, you need money, you give money. And right. even if it's right. little money. Right. You know, it's uh, giving somebody. And when you do it without even thinking, that's coming from yeah, your yeah. heart. Right. And, um, you know, with me, I, I donate my time a lot. And people say, well, why do you do this? Don't ask me why I do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, don't ask me why I'm doing anything. Just say thank you or, or just say, how come I'm not doing what David's right. doing? Or how come I'm not doing something else that not, has nothing to do with me? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read something. Um, we read it last week. Um, I was very, very honored to have Reverend Nancy Kennedy return as a yes. guest. And we're going to have to have her on this show, yes. too, because, um, wow, talk about a force for good. Well, um, I found this quote, and I, I just want to read it again because it, it's really touched me. The author is unknown. It's called The Wise Woman's Stone. A wise woman who was traveling in the mountains found a precious stone in a stream. The next day she met another traveler who was hungry, and the wise woman opened her bag to share her food. The hungry traveler saw the precious stone and asked the woman to give it to him. She did so without any hesitation. The traveler left, rejoicing in his good fortune. He knew the stone was worth enough to give him security for his entire lifetime. But a few days later, he came back to return the stone to the wise woman. I've been thinking, he said, I know how valuable the stone is, but I give it back in the hope that you can give me something even more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me the stone. Like, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not That's about, powerful. yeah, it's not about the stone, it's something It's powerful. Deeper. Absolutely. And, and being authentic and giving from the heart and, um, you know, it it has to be authentic. Absolutely. Right? So it can't be riddled with martyrdom no. or resentment or, you know. Or agenda. Or agenda. We talk about right. that all the time. Absolutely. You know, be a blessing. When I say to people, let me be a blessing in your life, I'm not asking for anything in return. Mm -hmm. Just, well, I am. Your time. Give me your time. Mm -hmm. You know, let me be a blessing. And that usually happens. I need your time. So I can we can go from there. Absolutely. Well, I love that. All right. So let's take a quick break. And we are going to be right back on. Jackie Vessio on Life Changing Hour Live, and I'm here with David Octavio Gandel, and we are at the premiere, the first show ever of Life Changing Hour with Jackie and David, and uh, we hope that um, you know this message, uh, you know, it just kind of goes around that people kind of share it um, and go from there into something uh, deeper in their lives as well, and then hopefully that they're touched somewhere. And, you know, it's not always cancer or, or disease or something like that. Like we always said, surviving your cancer, remember that seminar that I did? Um, yes. It was basically about, you know, surviving your cancer doesn't have to be a disease. It can just be, um, you know, something in your life that is cancerous. It could be a relationship. It could mm -hmm. be friendships. It could mm -hmm. be your job. It could be your boss. It could be your, <laughs> be your thoughts. It could be your, your thoughts. And you put yourself in such a bad mindset that you're never going to ever see it. Um, but there's one thing I wanted to touch on today real quick and it's it came up and it was something I heard a while back and it was like you know uh, we have you know in our, our bodies or our, our, our who we are as a human being it's you know sorry let's say it's a house right and you have pain across the street and you have fear in the corner and you have doubt that's coming on the sidewalk Right. And all those things are coming into your house every single day. Fear, pain, and doubt. All those things are coming into your house every day. But you have a choice to allow them to stay. And I just thought it was great how, how it's an that. analogy. And yes. I, I know I heard it somewhere, so someone's going to get credit for it. I forgot what, but it was pain. Right. It was but funny it that sense. how they Think put it. It's it. like we are we have a house, you know, we have a temple, our bodies are temple. Mm -hmm. But this is more about just us as human beings. Let's say we're the home, and then we have doubt across the street. We have pain coming around the corner. We have you know whatever it is, and we look at those things, and we let them in, and most Absolutely. of us allow them to stay. We give them room. Right. We literally keep them in the room. Like we right. actually give them a room, we give them food, we feed it. You're feeding yes. the doubt, you're yes. feeding your fear, you're feeding your pain. And, and I said, I've been in pain. I have fear. I had doubt. 
I went through all that to the maximum, yet somehow through prayer and through hope and through faith, I found ways every single time to not allow that to control me in the now, and, that day I was living. And I mean, really, in your circumstances, if you were able to find a way to do that, most of us can find a way to do that. We may not realize it at the time. You know, I don't, I don't think people purposely get up in the morning and decide they're going to sabotage their own day. Correct. Sabotage their own week. But, you know, days, turns, days turn to weeks. Yes. Weeks turn to months. And that makes a life. Absolutely. You know? So it, it's interesting that you said that about the house. You know, um, I've said before on the show that it's interesting when you stop to realize, yes, we're all going to have challenges. It's part of life. You can think about them and you can work on them, and you can Grow. have a drink with them, but oh. you don't have to have an all-night sleepover. That's another way right? of doing it, exactly. You know, like, and it's basically what you're saying, you know. Yeah, make it simple. You make know, it simple sure. for people. Think about you know, it. Wave, wave to fear and doubt. Mm -hmm. Wave to them on the sidewalk. Yeah, you I know, mean. It doesn't mean you have to let them in the house. You grow from it. Uh, you shake sure. their hand and you say goodbye, you know, and hopefully you don't see them. You don't see that pain again. Hopefully you don't see that. Uh, doubt again. Hopefully you don't see that mm -hmm. fear again. I'm saying they're going to keep coming. I mean, yes, that's life. I yes. mean, we... And what can you do with that energy? Um, well, I have a funny story. <laughs> I was uh, working on a blog recently, and um, interestingly enough, the blog was about what do we do when we feel that we're spiraling Correct. Out of and, control. and either out of control or even just spinning our wheels and how we can work through that. Right? And so I started writing, and I had some good stuff, by the way. I mean, it was about 75% done, and, you know, I got sidetracked, whatever, had, had to get the kids, whatever the case may be. It was done enough that it was done, put to bed. And I believed in what I was writing. When I did go back to it, it was at a time that I probably shouldn't have. It was late at night, and I needed my rest. I had been a little sleep deprived, and I was like, no, 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 I'm going to finish it. Well, boy, did God give me a gift that evening. Wow. Because I, I really could have gone with my first gut instinct and gone to sleep, but I didn't. Correct. And I was overtired. I butchered this thing to the point that I so <laughs> spiraled out of control with it. I was the poster child for what I was blogging about because I had to find a way. I mean, I was like, oh, it must be 11 o'clock. I think it was... Um, quarter to two by the time that I sat myself down and said this is great this is good stuff I am right now living and breathing what you're writing. what I'm writing about Correct. so even in that there was a gift um you know learn the lesson don't don't do that again <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes good is good enough it doesn't have to be perfect but you know I had to pause and it's what we were saying in the last hour you have to train yourself. Just stop. Correct, and clear and clear your mind, and, and clear your house, like we're talking about all yes. the time. It's like you clear clear your house. Like everybody go home. That's it. Yes, it's it's that's late. It. It's right. late. We right. fed you. We gave you drinks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just go we're home. Done. Right. But, and right. then and then I told you. You told me the time. What time do you go to sleep? I go to sleep at two, three a.m. Seriously, and I get my writing done at that time. Why do I do that? Is because that's the time. That's the time that brain works. my brain is clear. I take I hit the pause button on everybody. Mm -hmm. and so sorry mm -hmm. if you text me. <laughs> it, no, I don't, but it's good. That unless you do it's an that. emergency. You know yourself. Yes. You know yourself. I, everything is shut off, and I'm I'm either listening to um, um, a sermon, or I'm listening to music, or I'm listening to somebody, or I'm going over something that I wrote before, and I'm going right back to it, and I'm going okay, editing, 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 you know, mm -hmm. and something that I learned, and you know, and things like that, because everything that I'm writing, I've gone through. Same here. Everything yes. that I'm writing, yes. I've gone through. And there's something to be said for that. Everything that I'm sharing, I've gone through. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's, it was interesting that, um, you know, um, uh, this weekend, I was the one surprised. I, I share this with you. I want to share this just because it's so special to me. Um, you know, I, I'm usually the one that surprises people with awards and my shows and, and things like that. And, and the promoter of the show um, uh, at the Diamond uh, last weekend in Boca, um, he surprised me. And I'm over there. I'm Love running it. around. They're calling me. Right before the second half of the show starts, there's an intermission, and they call David Gandell, come to the stage, and I go to the stage, and we're giving away uh, gifts and goodies and stuff like that to like a raffle and things like that in the intermission, and all of a sudden, 
I'm there, I hug both of them, Dina and, and Andres, uh, the promoter, and I hug both of them and just, you know, like thinking, okay, there's another award, and all of a sudden they come and give me an award. And it wasn't about the award. It was about the gentleman that gave me the award. And that, to me, it's precious. It's like when, you know, I always say that, you know, the, the love languages, you mm -hmm, know, I always say to people, mm -hmm. that book is amazing. Amazing. Um, you know, there's certain books that I always tell people they should get. That's one of them. Yes. Learn your partner's love languages, yes. your friend's love languages. It's not just about intimate relationship. It's about no, friendships. It's about absolutely. everything. And to me, it's always been touch and affirmation because I, I became a manager at such a young age that I didn't get a lot of information, but thank God for my parents and thank God for that I knew God, that right. I knew that I was doing the right things. But the fact that he took that time to speak, this is a man that doesn't speak too much, that's why I host the shows, um, to take the time to speak, and the award was really you. cool. It was just a ma microphone, I which know, is perfect. I love it. It was a glass microphone, it's online, you can see it. But it was funny that when he spoke from the heart, from the spirit, and you know, I know he appreciates me. I know we're brothers in Christ. We're mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. for eternity. Um, you know, he's, he's become that kind of person in my life, a brother. But at the same time, the fact that he did that, and it was, I, volumes, I, was right? I was out. I was literally, I had to go back. <laughs> <laughs> now, people yeah. know I'm emotional already, but I had to go back and, and compose and then come back and then thank God that I, I was able to speak and then the show must go on and I was well, there and, and I gotta go back to hosting. Real, it's those real moments though that make the difference. You Absolutely. Know? And, and um, it, it's the authenticity and, in the end. But it also it brings me back how the relationship started. And it was interesting because this was after I survived cancer, um, about a year later, okay. he met me at a show. And he came to South Beach to see me at the gym. I was running Gold's Gym at the time. And he came to see me and he said, you know, I would like you to host the shows for me. You know, you have great energy. You know, you've done this for a long time already. And, but I remember the question I asked him. God put it inside of me. Ask him if he'll let you share your testimony in a bodybuilding state, in a bodybuilding fitness show. Right. It's not, usually people don't do that. No. And, and I remember being bold about it. It's like, it's not about the job. It was about, is this, if, if, if I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. it has to have a meaning for me. Right. It has to mean I something more. Yes. Yes. And, and for me was God opened the doors, gave me, like this show, mm -hmm. this is amazing. You have opened, Jackie, you're an angel. You've mm -hmm. opened, you're an angel from God that opened the door for me to be able to share my testimony, be able to share my experiences with people and hopefully give them hope through it. But, but Andres gave me that, and he immediately said yes. It wasn't a doubt. I asked for something bold. Remember, yeah. he's a promoter. He doesn't have I to know, do anything. But, but I, I am constantly thinking how sometimes in life we find our own tribes, and that's beautiful, but sometimes our tribes just have a way of finding us. Yes. And it's so amazing when that happened. You know, he is your soulmate. You know, and and so I can say that it has nothing to do with romantic love. Yeah, it has no, nothing my, to do with blood. Yeah. You know, but some people are soulmates, and they're meant to be connected. And I always think it's bigger than all of us. You know. But, and, I, but I'm always thanking him for that because that mo he, I always tell him that the show was great yeah. and all this thing. But but I always say to him, listen. You don't know the emails I get still. You don't know the texts I get still. That video is on YouTube. There's multiple videos that I spoke about my testimony on a fitness stage. And the people that has touched, it's like the show is over. Right. But the story lives on. And yes. when and people meet me and things like that. And I keep telling him that. that. And so at that moment, you know, I'm always going to be grateful for that opportunity. But the fact that he acknowledged that, the fact that I, mm -hmm. uh, I mm -hmm. go out of my way to... To do those things, right? Not just not just host a show, but right. I do I do everything that I can to help him because he has given me a platform, you know. So for that, I always share that with people, and, and not everybody knows it. But you always have out there. You always, I mean, I mean you. I'm talking about you. Everybody is listening. Mm -hmm. You have a way that you can always create a platform for someone else, and you never know how when you create that platform, that person can be such a blessing in your life that your dreams come true. So instead of looking at why you're doing, uh, how you're doing something or what you're gonna gain from it, just go through life and I always say to people, let me be a blessing and that's what I mean. Let me create a platform for you. I know I can help you through my mm -hmm. tests. I know I can help you through my challenges. I know I can help you through what I've gone through. 
let me be that source of a blessing to you. Let me give you that platform like you're giving me. And I pray, I gotta say, guided embrace is gonna be huge. I don't know in what way, right. but all the dreams and all the vision that you have for this, if I get to be that little tool, instrument to support that of you and then becomes big, we're gonna go back to show number one <laughs> and we're gonna go back to today and say, look what happened to the little baby. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the baby has to grow. But guess what? When you're a baby, what happens? You go through everything. You have to learn you everything. Do. You have to go, go through, through everything. You're always learning. You have to mm -hmm. learn how to talk. You have to learn how to walk. You have to do... Everything has to go through a process. Sure. And, and you know what? Babies don't question it. When a baby <laughs> is crawling, right? And trying to stand up They and just walk. cry. They want attention. Right. But they crawl. They try to walk. They fall. They don't then say... Oh, maybe I'm not supposed to walk, and oh goodness, you know, I think this is a sign, and oh, okay, I'm not good at this. No, no. They continue on, and a baby just knows instinctually they're going to walk. Correct. There's no question. And so if we can become that as adults, Correct. And, and really stand by our dreams and, and the good that we're putting out there and the difference we're trying to make, then... And, wow. let, and let's stay on this. Let's stay on this. Um, on this, real quick about the baby. Real quick, just two seconds. I want to because <laughs> I want to add to this because it's a perfect analogy. A baby crawls, then walks, and then runs. Mm -hmm. Right. Everything takes a thing. Everything. I mean, everything has a process, right? And as parents, I always, I always, <laughs> how they worry. Uh -huh, when are they walk? When are they, <laughs> and then they worry because they're running so fast they can't even catch up to them. That's interesting. So yeah. first you worry about them walking right. and running and right. all these things and then you worry about them running so fast. My goddaughter climbs over everything and throws herself. She already broke her arm once. She'll jump it again. She doesn't have any fear whatsoever. So we worry first about them walking and then we worry about them running. About them running right. So either so. way, well, there's always a worry, you know, right. there's always that, that worry. So, and, and I would say that in life, it's just the same thing. We're worrying about, is this going to work? And then after it works, we're worried about, can we handle success? Interesting. You know, the two fears right. I talk about, you're either afraid of success or you're afraid of failure. You're afraid of one thing and those two things, will one of them We'll hold you back from your dreams. Right. All right, we have a caller on the line. Uh, who am I speaking to? Lisandra. Lisandra. Oh, my. Is this Lisandra Balboa? Hi. Oh, my God. This is this is uh, Lisandra Balboa. She's on the line. Um, wow. Thank you for calling on my first show. That's awesome. Listen, Lisandra, for those that don't know me, um, is... Uh, what? How many minutes? Okay. Uh, Lisandra is basically someone that's very special to me. Uh, a few years ago, I um, I was on TV uh, doing an interview. Uh, came for your aunt saw me. Uh. <laughs> well, what what was interesting about Alessandra? Alessandra has right now she's battling. An immature teratoma. Uh, for those who know me, that is the type of cancer, the type of tumor that I had. It grows different types of cancers, that's why it's terminal. What makes it terminal, what we are case studies. Um, um, I'm the worst case study because mine covered all my organs. Um, Lysandros is, is right by the liver, correct? Yeah. Yes, and she's, but she, again, the immature teratoma grows different types of cancer, so what the problem with it is that you can give it certain types of chemos that might kill one of the cancers but it grows different types of cancers and they're all aggressive and they're all terminal. So that's the, that's the, that's the bad part of the cancer. Now the good part is that when Lissandra contacted me, we were, we were contacting each other for a few, for about a year, right? We contacted each other and then she, she's battling again for the second time and I, I made a promise to her, I said, I gotta meet you. And we met last year, right? The first time? And we met last year, and we are. She is my sister. I love her. I I've been every time I go to the hospital. It's always perfect timing when I go to the hospital. <laughs> she's getting out of surgery, and I'm right there. Or she's getting out of chemo, and I'm right there. It's like um, today. You know, I was there, and um, but um, 
the TV show, you know, it was for her. And I said, but what's interesting about it, I've never had a doubt that Lissandra's not going to be healed. I never had that doubt. I told her, I said, just like the doubt that I had, the, 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 the confirmation that I had right. that God was going to heal me somehow, that it was an instrument. When I first met Lissandra, I just said, oh, this is awesome, God. Because now I have someone else that can share yes. their story and we can do it together. Yes. And I said Power to Lissandra, we are going to do, you know, maybe together, together, like in a show or something sure. or, or speaking together. But, something. but here's the thing about Lissandra, just like me. Lissandra has bright lips. It's, a found, it's an organization that she does to help other people. She literally, at now, while she's going through it, she's mm -hmm. going to hospitals and giving kids and, and other girls uh, gifts. Right, Lissandra? Yeah. So, so what? She's going through it. Okay. At the same time as she's battling, she's actually helping. And that is beautiful. And, and I welcome you to come on here anytime. Oh, yes. You have to come in. You have to come in like literally live and sit with us, Lissandra. We would love that. Two weeks. Maybe in two weeks. Maybe in the yeah, next show. Anything we can do. Um, real quick, because we are out of time, unfortunately. I just want to um, do a quick guided giving segment for Independence Regained. Um, the founder is near and dear to my heart, Scott Wells. He does a not-for-profit organization that provides independent living services and wellness services such as adaptive cycling programs to the neurologically impaired population in Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. He's right now advocating for a partnership to get a neurological rehabilitation center of excellence in North Louisiana. And you can find more information on his website, www.independenceregain.org. Um, this year is the fifth year that they're holding the fifth annual Cycling for Independence fundraising event. It's this Saturday, April 30th, in Shreveport, Louisiana, from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's amazing. The event consists of cycling distances of 10, 35, 50, and 75 miles. And it's fully supported by sports and gear vehicles and water stations. And all participants receive lunch. And what I love is that in the spirit of giving back to the community, Independence Regained has purchased, and this gives me goosebumps, and will be presenting as a surprise an adaptive cycle to a 10-year-old girl with special needs so that she can ride with her friends. And her mom doesn't know it's happening. Her, her mom knows, but she does not. So oh, okay. that is incredible. Um, and Melissa, I mean, um, Alessandra, I want to say thank you for being on the air. Um, I'm going to plan this for you to come with us one one episode and come in so we can share our stories together. I think that's going to be very powerful to, help, be amazing. to help other people because, so, you know, you know I love you. You know you are healed. <laughs> Listen, you are healed. I know you are. You're going to go through this. I know the chemo they're doing is not working right now, but we are praying for you, and we are going to continue to pray for you. But the biggest thing is that you don't ever lose that smile. I love you. Well, it is time to go. This has been incredible. Um, I'm really touched. And, Dad, if you're listening, as always, I love you. We wish you all things bright and beautiful. Until we meet again on Guys and Bruce. We did it! Wow. Yeah, she's live! We did it. We did it. Oh, we found the phone. It's at Starbucks. What? Oh. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. No. Yes, I got a text. Oh, no, you really? did not. Right now. Yeah. I got a text right now. How about that? <laughs> right in the middle of the show. <laughs> Where was it? I don't know. He One just texted me. turned it in. Jackie just texted me. It's a Starbucks, Wellington Trace, and Forest Hill. Jackie texted me. I said, Jackie's right here. Yeah. That's funny. Remember I text? When did you, um, I'm more of covered in Starbucks stuff. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs>